Welcome everyone. Starting this video, I'm going to upload a series of tutorials for Libram. Libram is a software package for reduced total models developed at Lawrence Livermore National Lab. The series will focus on mathematical background on which the Libram package is built. The tutorial today will introduce the Poisson equation and the derivation of its finite element discretization. Click the link below to download the Libram package and another link for the Poisson example code. Here is a Poisson Poisson equation. U is the solution function and F is the right hand side function. Let's say both functions are functions of position x, which is in d dimensional space. Here d can be 1 or 2 or 3. For example, in a two dimensional space, we can define our spatial domain to be omega and boundary to be gamma. Usually the problem is posed by giving a specific right hand side function F and solve for the unknown function U, which satisfies this Poisson equation for a given boundary condition. For the demonstration, let's say the function u equals zero at the boundary. Today, we will briefly introduce a numerical way of solving this Poisson equation using a weak formulation. Some of you may never heard of a weak form before. However, the concept of the weak form must be clear after this presentation. To explain the weak form, I need to introduce another function called a test function. Let's denote it as v, which is also also a function of position. By the way, we are not going to mention anything about the requirement of all these functions here. Rather, we will focus on the derivation of the numerical method first and revisit the requirement of each function later. Now, if you multiply both sides of the Poisson equation by a test function v, then you get this new differential equation. This needs to be satisfied for any test function v because the test function is virtual. It was not in the original Poisson equation, because this equation needs to be satisfied only on our domain omega, let's integrate both sides on omega. Then you will get this integral equation. Now it is time to remind ourselves with some tricks we learned from calculus. That is, the product rule shown in the cheat sheet here. Then in worksheet, set a equals v and b prime equals second derivative of u. Then by the product rule, you should be able to see that the left hand side of this integral equation is equal to these two terms. Now let's look at the second term. Here again, we need to be reminded by another theorem we learned from calculus. That is the divergence theorem. The divergence theorem relates the volume integral with a surface integral. So going back to the worksheet, we can replace the second volume integral with the surface integral. Now let's look at the surface integral again. Here we have some freedom on the choice of the test function v on the boundary because we are only interested in obtaining solution in omega, not particularly on the boundary. Well, the solution at the boundary is already determined by the boundary condition, right? So we can set v equals zero at the boundary, which makes this surface integral disappear. This enables us to replace this volume integral with another volume integral with only first derivative terms. We call this integral equation a weak form. Let's compare the original Poisson equation and the weak form. We call this original second order differential equation as a strong form. The reason for strong versus weak will be clear when we contrast the requirements of each form. For example, the solution function u must have second derivatives in the strong form. Otherwise, it does not make sense at all. On the other hand, for the weak form, the function u does not need to have second order derivative. Instead, it only needs to have its first derivative and must be integrable on omega. The same requirement applies for the test function v. In summary, we say that they are in H1 Hilbert space. On the other hand, u and v functions in the strong form do not have to be integrable. The same for f in the strong form. It does not have to be integrable, while f needs to be integrable for the weak form. Strictly speaking, it needs to be L2 Hilbert space. Finally, the strong form does not need any test function, while the weak form does need a test function. All right, now the finite element method builds its foundation on the weak form. The finite element method predefines what u and v functions can be. Usually, they are predefined as a linear combination of some known functions phi. Note that phi functions depend on the position variable x, and they are predefined. 
so they are known. On the other hand, the use of k and v sub j are unknown scalar values. These scalar values can be considered as finite element coordinates. Therefore, the derivative of u with respect to the position x can be done by taking derivative of phi functions. Likewise, for the derivative of phi function also, let's plug these functions to the weak form, then we get this equation. By the way, it is important to remember now that the test function v was arbitrary. The weak form must be satisfied for any test function. This implies that this equation must be satisfied for each index j. Now it is the observation time. Here everything is known except the scalar u sub k with index k. So this can be considered as an unknown vector u. Also note that this integral has two indices, j and k. So this can be written as a matrix. In other words, a second or the tensor. On the other hand, this integral has only one index, j. So this can be considered as a known vector f. Combining all these observations, we can write this as a linear system of equations, a u equal f. By solving for the unknown vector u here, you will find a specific value for each u sub k. Then you can plug this into this expression to find out the solution function u for the weak form. This whole process can be done by MFM example in Libram. Please check out the link below for the example file in Libram GitHub. The next video will talk about how we build a projection based reduced total model for Poisson equation using the linear system we have derived in this video. All right, I hope this video was helpful. See you next time.